Thank you very much, D-Man. Uh, fact of the matter is, it's not World's Big Plays, it's Shook yeah. Big Plays. Number one, do not give Shook Lee Sin. He destroyed Kaboom, he destroyed Shield. Number two, don't give Wicked Aurelia. He delivers. Yes, they beat it last time, but he still had a strong performance. Monty, uh, before we get to replays. You can't say enough about Shook's play that game. It was absolutely incredible. It's so rare in the professional scene, especially at a game at Worlds, to see someone snowball all three lanes like that, just amazing. Well, you know what? You've set it up. Let's pull the montage up onto your screens because, as I said, I think we're going to rename this the Shook Analyst Desk for the next couple of minutes. Roll the clips out, and analysts, how on earth does Shook go from not delivering another champions to being just godlike on this Lee Sin. Well, I mean, in that first one, you don't use your E as watch to engage right there. You don't know where the jungler is. It's just a bad play. Next play, Freak, bottom yep. lane, 80 the, carries. I like the flash slow that came in from Nif, the confidence everything's gonna land. Just lands a flash time warp just to make sure it hits. All right, back up to the top lane. Once again, making, saves life just a little bit difficult. We're shook on the minimap coming out. I think by this point, he's got those Moby boots and Again, just near flawless execution. This is really great by Wicked as well. He gets the reset on his Q. W Q's Sheen first to kill a caster minion. Perfect. All right, let's see. What's next on our montage? Oh, this yeah. was the mid lane play. Probably. Yeah. Froggen gets a nice wave in the turret and is able to get a charm before Shook gets in. So it's just a super clean kill. And they both get out from a tower dive with the 80% HP. What's Eight. even more impressive is it doesn't end there because I think we got the dragon play next. He just doesn't miss any of his skill shots. Look at that again. Nearly max range Q. Coming in right there with the that kick. That knock-up onto Janna was the reason why it, it just went so well. She couldn't ulti fast enough because she was knocked up by the Lee Sin ult. Just so good. I mean, okay, so we actually had to cut the montage short. There were more plays. Jeez. But that was all prior to 17 minutes into the game. We do need to give Shook another massive props. Let's actually take a look at the quick MVP graphic that we've put together for his Lee Sin performance. Because truthfully, this game, this perfect performance, was on Shook's shoulders. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. He's not gonna get that champion again. Well, we keep saying that. Like, I, I don't understand the teams at Worlds who aren't doing their research properly. Like, we're saying, oh my God, Gorilla should never get Thresh again. Oh my God, you can't give uh, Shook Lee Sin clearly. Like, the fact that they banned Ramus. Like, you saw him pick Ramus because Lee Sin was taken away. Right. Like, hey, I don't I, understand. I didn't have a problem with the Ramus ban. If you don't want to deal with that, if you're not comfortable practicing against it, it is a pocket pick. There's no problem. I have a problem with the Maokai ban when there's Aurelia yeah. on the table. It, all of Alliance's wins so far have come with Aurelia. Yeah. Take it away from Wicked. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll get back to this discussion and why it's relevant in a moment because we are going to check in with Shox, who's standing by with the member of the Victorious Alliance. <laughs> Thank you very much, Quick Shot. As I'm joined here by Nif, hot off that win over Najee and White Shield. Still very excited. Um, talk me through the beginning and the game plan, knowing that yesterday you had the makings to beat them. What comp did you guys come up with? Well, it was kind of similar to yesterday. So we had Cillian first pick. It was pretty much the same. And then we went into our go in comp with Aurelia. And uh, we decided to put Cillian on support again. And this time, we could actually finish the game. and. I think it had a lot to do that we were kind of nervous yesterday and this was cold, so we we're kind of uncomfortable. And today it's warm and everyone of us really motivated to win and we could make it through. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go a little bit more in depth about that window. First off, tell me about the early game and Shook. Did you guys even realize how fast he was making those plays because it was unreal? Yeah, he, he is really good on Lee Sin. It's like his best champion ever. And he's really good at making plays. He's really good at top, ganking top lane. But we also made a play bot lane where I slowed the channel and we got a kill. It's like really good for us. So we could snowball the bot lane as well, not like in the other games where we were rather equal farmed. Uh, tell me about playing versus Gorilla's Janna, because obviously he wanted to show the world his Janna play. It was good, but you guys seem to have an answer for it. Yeah, I think he just picked it because he wanted to pick it. Pretty much that I picked Janna yesterday as well. I was like, yeah, I just want to play, even though it wasn't the best pick. I think we had a stronger lane even, and we could just take advantage of it. Um, then talk me through, obviously you build up that huge advantage as you did yesterday, and then it creeps into your mind, we have to hold on to this. So what adaptations did you make in the mid game to make sure you got it around this time? It was really slow. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we just didn't feel really good at the beginning of the tournament. We had some problems at the end of the boot camp, and I think we overcome those problems, and that's the alliance we have trained for the whole year. And that's what we they want to show the world, that we can beat the best. All right. How much did uh, your experience from the beginning of the EU LCS help here? Because it was also a slow start for you guys in there. And then you came, well, you became the champions in Europe. 
Yeah, it's kind of similar what happened. We lost a lot at the beginning, and then we overcome it. And then eventually we got first. So is that a good sign for us? <laughs> I think that is a good sign. Uh, looking ahead to tomorrow, you, of course, have to beat Kaboom and then see what happens in the rest of the group. What do you think your chances are to get first? It's, it's all in Cloud9's hands. So it's hope for them to make it a draw. And then we can show again how good we are and then make the win. So it's like our only chance to get first. But it's, it's good for us anyways. Yeah, it absolutely is. Fantastic game. Thank you very much, Nev. All right, we're going to send it back over to the desk as we close out day three. Thank you very much, Shox. Uh, right, let's actually talk a little bit more serious about the game. It was a perfect win. Alliance come in there, they don't give up a tower, they don't give up a dragon, they don't give up a kill. They take down the number three seed from Korea, I think surprising everybody watching, uh, except for 57% of the viewers who sided with Alliance. And this man, I'm who God. has taken the profit thing, so <laughs> double of crumbs. Talk to me about the game. I mean, we know it was just a huge individual performance from Alliance, but they also had the strategy to back it up. It, it really makes me, it comforts my doubt that Alliance is really just a team centered around Froggen, which it was originally, but this game, Froggen was actually the only person on Alliance who was losing lane early. Uh, actually, Wicked was super far ahead, Shook was super far ahead making those plays, and you saw Tab solo kill, or sorry, not solo kill, but 2v2 kill Zephyr with no outside help. That was insane. And Froggen was struggling a little bit mid until Shook made that play with him. So it just goes to show, it's not just the Froggen show. Yeah, I actually yeah. really like that Froggen was behind early, and what happened was is he never died, and he never got chunked too hard. And when Shook was approaching mid lane, he actually pushed aggressively, and right when Shook came in, he had minion advantage, and he was able to get a charm. So instead of just kind of like, maybe like going for the 1v1 kill, like, you know, the hero play, he didn't go for that. He went for the safe play, wait for my jungler to get there, and then take the 100% kill. And what I like about the frog in play in general, he talked about it actually in his prior game today as well. He said, uh, in that game at least, in the interview, he said he wasn't focusing as much on his individual play. He was focusing on the shot calling, on getting his team into, into a good spot and not trying to do as much himself. And it is always hard to multitask focusing entirely on your lane, which is someone like someone like Shao Wei Shao will do, where he is silent the entire game and he focuses on the 1v1s, or someone like Froggen, who's looking around the map saying, oh no, we can make this play, let's set up for Dragon, checking the timers, and not just looking at how do I beat up going in this mid lane. Now, talking about this matchup, I mean, Najin White Shield, they came in there. Was there ever a chance they could have pulled it back? I personally felt there was some uh, scaling, some late game power that could have come in there. Monty, from your viewpoint, could they have done anything different? Uh, well, I mean, they could have not played so cocky, especially in the top lane on that first gank. They just didn't have the vision to make that kind of play. Watch kind of messed it up. If he had had his E up, he could have gotten out of that. And, uh, I mean, Ryze was winning up in the top lane by a pretty significant CS lead early before that gank occurred. So they had some nice things going for them. But when we talk about, even with all these, like, big scaling champions like Wari, like Ryze, like Tristana, when you get that far behind, they did an admirable job of defending, and Alliance was not the best at closing. Uh, we were kind of questioning uh, Tabs' split pushing on Kog'Maw in the bottom lane, but there's a point of no return. An 18K gold down, I mean, you're just, that's not tenable. Yeah, but talking about cocky play, Watch just ganked mid from the top side and then disappeared into the top river and then immediately went top. Like, that's fine, but it's also really predictable. You can't gank a top laner using your escape going in, going, Ah, they don't. They don't know I'm coming up top. It's Lisa's super. not going to counter game. Final yeah. thoughts before we move on, Monty. <laughs> yeah, and this is the question that I had because in the Korean regionals, Watch was very, very good. But I have never seen him play that well before. And my question was, can Watch sustain this level of play? And through these first two games of, from Alliance, the answer is really no. He's died multiple times in the early game. Every time he needs to get his act together if he wants to go far in the playoffs. There is a whole lot of pressure on tomorrow's games. We'll see where the standings are after 18 matches have been completed from the Singapore group stage. So there are the results on your screens. First and foremost, no team has guaranteed a first place finish yet. Because of the fact that there are so many tiebreaker scenarios, we were initially gonna run through them with you, but there's so many, it's a bit difficult to keep up. So what we're gonna do is explain what happens in the event of a tiebreaker. So if we have a three-way tie tomorrow between any three teams in either group, a single round robin will be played. If the teams are still tied after that round robin, there will be a single elimination bracket where whoever won a game in the round robin tiebreaker would get a bye, and the remaining two teams would play that single match to determine who would play the team that got the bye, meaning a total of five additional games. In the event of a four-way tie, which is likely, 
The teams will be randomly drawn into a single elimination bracket. The winners of the first round in the bracket will then face off in a final match. Obviously, the winner of that match gaining the top seed into quarterfinals, or the loser of that match will take the bottom seed in the quarterfinals. That's in the event of tiebreakers. There are six games tomorrow to determine just how many we have. There are European teams in this matchup, meaning tiebreakers are very <laughs> likely. Yeah, a uh, point of clarification on the three-way tie, by the way, is the team that won the fastest is the one that gets the bye there. If, yeah. Obviously, if it's 2 0 one, one zero, 2 in the round robin, you've got the automatic seeding. 1-1 one, one down the line, the fastest win is the one that gets the bye, and then the other two play in to, to get that the, the ranking. Seeing what we've seen from today's game, seeing Fnatic deliver, seeing uh, Alliance really step up, taking down both Cloud9 and Najin Shield, uh, are we expecting tiebreakers, Monty? I mean, rose, rose, your, your rose tinted goggles. Are you, do you think we're going to see a few? Uh, probably in Group C, or maybe in Group C. Probably not in Group D would be my anticipation. Well, we'll, we'll have to see. Let's take a look at those six matches that will be coming your way tomorrow with those possible tiebreakers that we've mentioned in mind. So the day gets underway with Kaboom taking to the Rift against Cloud9. After that, North American squad LMQ will challenge Samsung Blue, followed by Kaboom once more returning to the Rift against Europe's Alliance. There is a lot of games tomorrow. They will begin Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Central European Summertime, which is 11 p.m. in the Pacific time zone. And I think just before we actually end off, I do want to add just a couple minutes just to talk about today's games because I think they deserve just a little bit extra kick. I mean, Fnatic losing to OMG dramatically. Alliance beating Cloud9. Fnatic, you know, bouncing back to decimate LMQ. Probably. What was your favorite moment of today's games? Hmm. Just the reinstitution that EU mids are really freaking strong. I'm like, I really like having those kind of like idols out there and seeing like Peke and Froggen do their thing again and like putting themselves as like, yeah, like this is what we can do. It's really nice to see that. Monte Cristo, what stands out in your mind? I think it's really fun that we had kind of one day in this group that was all about North America, and then now we have the this day that's like really all about Europe, and it's now just coming down to the wire as a result. So can these European teams keep up these hot streaks, or will NA bounce back just like Europe did into uh, kind of the second and third days? I want to bounce off double lift. Do you feel that EU teams have a higher skill and team ceiling than North American teams based on what we've seen so far? Uh, based on what I've seen so far, yeah, actually, I, I changed my mind because the first day they were four NA teams were four and zero. I was on that hype train, but now I've seen Alliance and Fnatic. Uh, they really adapt so quickly day to day, and today it just really impressed me. Now, Freak, is it a consistency issue that's going to be the only thing holding EU back? Uh, consistency was definitely a big thing. I mean, Fnatic, their best versus their worst was so far different. <laughs> I mean, very much night and day. But to me, my favorite moment actually was sitting here on the desk with you guys and also Crapo and Crumbs. But like. The fact that we're like, oh my god, he didn't ult the Nexus, no, oh no, so as, oh my god, what hit, like, that's amazing, right? Like, I didn't get to watch the XPK backdoor a year and a half ago with people around to, like, high five when stuff happened. And similarly, like, all those shook gangs, it was like, it's nice having people to yell with. Yeah. Like, if you guys aren't watching League of Legends with friends, do so. I don't care if it's, like, on Skype or if you're doing it, like, at a, at a bar or something. It's a really fun social game to watch. I, I completely agree. I was screaming. Crepo legitimately broke the chair that we are sitting on because he jumped up and snapped it. Anyways, that does it for today. I think today has been the single most incredible day of League of Legends in an extremely long time. I cannot wait for tomorrow's matches. I'd like to thank all of our guest analysts as well as all of you guys for joining us on this incredible day and tuning in. So from myself, the entire World's Broadcast team, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you tomorrow or tonight or whenever it is that this bloody minion spawn. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs>
insane games today. Cyanide and Peke both closing in. There's the slow. Shao Wei Shao goes over the wall. Reckless comes in. He gets the pentakill. The pentakill's man. <laughs> So low, he may even get dropped here. One more shot, there's the triple. He continues through, gets himself the quadra kill. They have so much push potential. Oh, Lovely going incredibly deep. Picks out Jeff for the ultimate of goal, but he just does next to no damage. In this mid lane, go for go. 